वेलकम यू आर वॉचिंग वी द पीपल एम सोनल मेरोत्रा कपूर नाउ इंडिया हैज कोविड वैक्सीन ह्यूज रिलीफ एंड न्यू ईयर बुदा but the focus has to shift to how to make enough vaccines available for a country our size and how much will it cost now you would think that covid has been such a leveler a global pandemic impacted one and all so the vaccine should also be available at the same fashion reality check that's far from what's happening across the globe and what's come to be known as a vaccine economy now did you know that the same brand of vaccine costs differently across the globe now this was always a suspicion by activists but turned into reality when in december of 2020 an insider from the belgium government leaked the rates at which the european union was procuring drugs from various pharma companies the tweet was later pulled down but lifted the veil on the worst kept secrets on vaccine pricing the leaked document made it clear that the european union paid substantially lower prices than the united states for the same drug from the same pharma company look at this data now on your screen to make it clear we've taken the example of the oxford vaccine since now it's available uh, in india as well two jabs of the oxford vaccine cost about 2.16 dollars to people in the european union about 4 dollars to people in the united states about 5 dollars in fact a little more than that to us indians and this 5 dollar price is actually a discounted rate at which the government is getting it if you and i want to get ourselves vaccinated and want to procure it privately we will be paying a little over 27 dollars that's about 2000 rupees now i'm sure the question on your mind now is is that fair why does that happen why do the same countries at times different countries get better prices than the rest of us well that's something that we will be discussing on we the people today but before i get into and introduce my panel uh, let me also give you an important background now let's rewind a little and go back to what happened in the october of 2020 In a landmark move, India and South Africa had raised the issue of price parity or the lack of it, and India raised it with the WTO or the World Trade Organization to make sure that countries do not grant patents and other intellectual property related to COVID-19 until global herd immunity is achieved. Now, what does patent mean? What are these intellectual properties? Well, these are secret tech and information about the development of the vaccine that are in the hands of a few. who then create monopoly this monopoly is what allows the pharmaceutical corporates uh, to keep prices artificially high historically steps have been taken to overcome monopolies for example in 2001 at the height of the hiv aids uh, epidemic measures were taken to eliminate patents and other barriers putting governments back in the driver's seat so that they can prioritize public health over corporate interests Now this current waiver which has been requested by India and South Africa to the WTO is a similar step to speed up the cure for COVID-19. India has proposed to the World Trade Organization to waive all protection on intellectual property allowing poorer countries as well to make affordable versions of the same vaccine that is ultimately going to save us all. Will that happen? Well for that understand how the WTO actually functions. decisions here are taken on consensus the covid proposal has been blocked by guess which all countries united states britain and european union where pharmaceutical companies wield political influence connected the dots there yet well the same countries remember who are getting the vaccine at a much cheaper rate than india at the moment are blocking india's move to make vaccine much more affordable and affordable for the rest of the world as well the industry argues that the patent protections and the profits that they make help them derive a, and a requirement for innovation that yields also and gets a working on life saving medicines however the question is is this a time to profit and what impact will it have on our nations well some of you must be thinking a little profit is all right right Well if masses of people in the poor countries do not gain access to vaccines their economies are likely to receive some spillover benefits from wealthier nations return to normal 
in a world shaped by inequality growth can coincide with inequality well now that if you understood that let me throw it open to our panel i'm very delighted to have with us on the program today uh, professor madhukar pai he's a md and phd of uh, canada research chair in epidemiology and global health associate director for mcgill international tb center as well his expertise will be of great importance to our discussion today also very delighted to have lena with us lena is the global intellectual property advisor to doctors without borders they have been petitioning for no patent on these vaccines for a very long time we'll get inputs from her also malini joins us she is the co convener for all india drugs action network delighted also to have with us uh, anant bhan he's the researcher in bioethics global health and policy and also by dr d roy he is the former deputy drugs controller for india let me first go across and get in a word from uh, professor madhukar pai dr pai first to you at this point when the world is looking at uh, vaccines it's looking at the rates at which we are getting it what are your thoughts on what's going on at the moment so uh sitting here in north america i've been um watching the anxiety about not having enough vaccines hmm. uh, and i think india has a tremendous role to play because india is known in the global health world as a pharmacy for the entire world uh generic uh, antiretrovirals from india were a game changer for the global hiv uh, success and i have been waiting for india to get uh, the vaccines out hmm. because indian vaccines would be the most affordable among all the vaccines we have seen so far hmm. and they have a potential to reach other low and middle income countries which are currently completely left out because the richest countries have gobbled up all the doses of uh Pfizer, Moderna and all the other vaccines mm -hmm. leaving the entire southern hemisphere barren right now. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are calling it a vaccine apartheid mm -hmm. and this inequity is so stark and it's shocking because on one hand every country will say we are all in it together but when it comes to behavior they've gone and cleared out all the shelves for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I have been really waiting and hoping that countries like India, China and to some extent Russia can provide the much needed counterbalance to this global narrative but the rich countries are clobbering or cobbling up all of the vaccine stocks hmm. but on on one hand i'm excited and i'm very uh, happy and and i'm waiting hmm. for india to lead the way in making an affordable vaccine for the whole world which i think the whole world needs right now hmm. and i think the serum institute vaccine to me would meet that bar partly because it's vetted and there's data mm. out there in the public domain and UK has approved it mm -hmm. and i think the the approval in india is strong mm. but the other indian vaccines is where i think i think we all have some anxiety over mm. if they also meet the same bar of serum mm. institute and then we have a spread of affordable vaccines coming out of india mm. i cannot not imagine covax facility in who not taking them up for the other low income countries mm. or other countries for example in africa could directly purchase them from india mm. because the chance of them getting and using pfizer or moderna is very low right now because mm. of price and because of difficulties in implementation it's simply not affordable for a lot of countries at the moment absolutely all right absolutely. let me bring it down even if it's affordable Yeah, even sure. if it's affordable hmm. the rich countries have already gobbled up all the stocks of pfizer and moderna hmm. all right uh, let me bring in uh, malini here as well she's the co-convener at the all india drugs action network uh, malini your thoughts on uh, what's happening at the moment uh hi sonal uh so i think i'd like to talk about uh the indian context and when we are discussing pricing today there are going to be many factors mm. so uh there would be factors like the number of vaccines that have been approved for use the number of manufacturers that are involved in uh making those vaccines any sort of restrictions due to exclusive agreements that might exist that create situations of monopoly and of course uh, also uh you know relevant would be the technology platforms so let's talk a little bit about the Uh, vaccines that uh, we currently uh, see um, you know having uh, uh, that are uh, receiving approvals in india hmm. so just uh, before the show i was listening to 
Adar Poonawala also talking about this issue. And uh, we're aware of the statements made by him that uh, he is proposing a price of roughly uh, 200 rupees per dose. Hmm. And uh, we also have been hearing that he's negotiating very hard on this price. Hmm. That's now, a discounted that price, price only for the government for the first uh, 10 million. Hmm. Yes, that's what he's saying. It's actually, uh, it, it's a little bit lower than, say, the $3 uh, uh, a dose uh, price that he's uh, giving to the COVAX facility. And now this price also may be too high for the government to procure the vaccines due to multiple factors. So uh, firstly, based on the technology platform, which in this case is the adenoviral vi uh, viral uh, vector, and considering the scale at which serum is going to be able to manufacture this, the industry estimates uh, would put the cost of uh, the product quite a bit lower than the price that he is offering. It's also, uh, keep in mind, a single component vaccine. So considering a variety of costs that go into this, um, it's likely that the fair price at the moment would be more in the vicinity of, say, uh, rupees 100 per dose for mm. government purchase, which mm. would be more than adequate to compensate serum for the risk that it has taken in mm. uh, manufacturing the stockpile. How are you coming to the calculation? Mind, so this is obviously through some research that we've had to do and talk to industry experts, people mm. who are involved in making uh, manufacturing vaccines. Mm. Also keep in mind that this procurement will be in very large volumes. Remember also that the government, in addition to the cost of the vaccine itself, is going to have to incur the cost of uh, uh, last mile delivery. So those sorts of costs involved. Mm. And perhaps the government in this case can leverage the role that it has played in supporting vaccine development and also supporting the clinical trials in India to negotiate a better price. Mm. Uh, I think I'll just also uh, maybe um, address the point that I just heard him talk about uh, when it comes to the private sale. Here, uh, I think he suggested a price of rupees 1,000, which uh, I feel mm. would be really per dose, yes, mm. which would be uh, literally price gouging. And in this case, really CRM taking advantage of the first mover advantage that mm. it would have in India. I think what Malini is trying to say here is sh in a, at a time in midst of a global pandemic, should there be profiting? And should companies be profiting out of these vaccines? That's the core question over here. On that note, let me bring in Lena as well. She's the Global Intellectual Property Advisor for Doctors Without Borders. Lena, very delighted to have you on the program. Now, you guys have been petitioning almost and urging countries not to issue patenting and not to ensure that this is intellectual property of only a few. Tell our viewers why is that? Well, I think uh, we've been campaigning on three fronts. Uh, one of this is very obvious that we have been saying that the deals between pharma companies and uh, academics, universities, and deals between governments and pharma companies, whether they are on procurement or other forms of licensing, should be made absolutely public. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely the genesis of how you control prices, because mm -hmm. that's where you know the devil in the details. Hmm. And this is the first thing we've actually said, uh, both to Oxford and AstraZeneca, and we wouldn't say anything different to the Serum Institute or to the government of India, that all deals between government and pharma and pharma and universities should be made absolutely transparently available for scrutiny. And I think this is one of the main campaigning topics uh, hmm. in, in MSF. We're not coming out and in leaks, one of the reasons so called why accidental leaks. This, is that India, hmm. for example, uh, at the World Health Assembly has signed up to the transparency resolution. Mm -hmm. So it needs to walk the talk. So if there is a deal between Serum Institute and the government hmm. of India or Bharat Biotech and the government of India, hmm. those deals would have to be made public because we need to understand how these products are being priced Mm. At which volumes would the price start coming down, as mm. Malini pointed out? Mm. And also, uh, at which point you would deliver the vaccine? Uh, what's your distribution plan? And what's the intellectual property or other forms of control on these vaccines? Mm. So that's right. one of the predominant mm. tasks that MSF has mm. for the developing world. Right. Let me bring in Anant Bhan over here. He's a researcher in bioethics, global health and policy. Delighted to have you on We the People. Uh, Anant, the, so far the narrative we've heard from vaccine manufacturers has been very simple. They say, well, a lot has gone into the research of these vaccines and thus they are charging what they are charging. Uh, just take our viewers through how exactly does it happen because so far what we've understood is, and for the benefit of our viewers, let me say this, a vaccine on an average 
would take about 10 to 15 years to develop. The fact that we've rushed in on this vaccine raise is only because there is such a dire need at this point. And this has been made possible because a lot of funding went into this. For example, a lot of uh, pharma companies which are producing vaccine serum institute, for example, in India, their clinical trials came in with the uh, help of ICMR, which is a government funded uh, organization. So at what point do you decide where the benefits lie and how much of profiteering should actually take place? Absolutely. Um, thanks, Sonal, for having me. Uh, you know, I don't think that a pandemic is the time for prof profiteering in any way. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is a time for us to show uh, solidarity in global health. And, you know, companies are a part of that. All of us are very proud of um, our generics, uh, drugs and vaccine industries. And they've literally saved millions of lives by producing drugs and vaccines for mass supply. That having been said, as you were rightly pointing out, you know, in both the vaccines that we, we are talking about today, which got approvals, ICMR is listed as a co-sponsor and ICMR has been a key facilitator for the conduct of the studies as well as, mm. you know, uh, gathering data which will allow for uh, licensure to go through. So if that is the case, then the uh, government through ICMR has already invested a lot uh, in these uh, vaccine candidates. Mm. And hence, uh, you know, obviously should be uh, one of, as, as a co-sponsor, should be in the driving seat in deciding uh, pricing negotiations. Mm. Um, you know, for us to actually have to wonder where the money will come from is, is a travesty because, you know, we are dealing with a pandemic. I don't think we should be actually talking about the private market at all till we actually have enough vaccine uh, to be able to respond mm. uh, from a public health perspective and herd immunity. If we are actually already talking about a private market, I think that's going to uh, create an inequity where you can easily jump the queue uh, if you have money. Uh, mm -hmm. While uh, those who are in the priority list of the government, you have to wait your turn because, you know, it's going to only be so many doses which are available. So I think in India, I would only advocate for the public market and a mm -hmm. public market pricing, which is based on sound uh, data mm -hmm. and uh, is not based on profiteering. And remember, the, the vaccine purchase cost is only one of the costs which will go into the immunization, the, the, the transport, uh, the mm -hmm. delivery, the vaccinators, uh, you know, ensuring the facilities are running. All of those are going to be additional costs. So the cost of actually delivering a vaccine to a recipient is much more hmm. than just the cost of the purchase from the company. And all of that has to be borne by the government. In fact, uh, just to add to that, when Anand uh, says that a lot of funding has gone or ICMR has helped in this funding, it's actually taxpayers' money. It's the money you and I pay. So on one hand, we facilitated for this research. Then why should we be, you know, uh, sort of uh, paying more over and above that. Let me bring in uh, Dr. Roy as well at this point. Uh, he has been the former uh, Deputy Drugs Controller of India. When you're listening to this debate on pricing today, uh, Dr. Roy, what are the thoughts really? Uh, in fact, uh, first let me congratulate the Indian drug regulator for uh, giving the permission of these two vaccines. Hmm. One is uh, manufactured by Silami Institute hmm. and another is Bharat Biotech. Hmm. Now the price regarding pricing, to be very frankly speaking, I was also a drug regulator. Hmm. As a drug regulator, we have, our main concern is the quality and efficacy. Hmm. We, we, we don't consider the price and other things. For hmm. that other department, they are there. So that's but completely what, with the government. As a personal view, what I so can open. So what I'm trying to understand yeah. from you is that, that pricing is completely controlled by the government. It's up to which government negotiates better. Is that correct? Yeah, that, 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 that's a another department. It is hmm. not from the drug regulatory department. Hmm. Drug regulatory, we are concerned about the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can tell you, India is nowadays is called up the pharmacy of the world. Hmm. Because India can supply not only vaccine, the other pharmaceuticals also at a very ch quality product at a very cheaper rate. Hmm. It's an affordable price. I see. All Nina over the globe. Ahead to that. I'll come so, to you in a bit. And hmm. For, hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. And so for vaccine, point. I can tell you that that measles at the at least every second child in the globe is taking the measles vaccines manufactured in India. Hmm. So the moment India will start the vaccine production of this COVID vaccine, hmm. naturally it will be much cheaper in the international market also. Lena, In quick India rebuttal. as well as the international hmm. market also. Right. Yeah, so absolutely there's no doubt that, you know, the, the many governments are relying on India to scale up the production of these vaccines hmm. and are wondering when exports of these life-saving vaccines uh, would start. 
but there are certain things that really need to happen which is one of the uh, areas is that the indian government could play a very big leadership role on the issue of transparency hmm. and this is where the problem lies that each government is going to negotiate separately with pharma companies we are never going to win on the pricing issue or the access issue hmm. and i think one of the problems really is that the brazilian institutions are signing a separate agreement Oxford and AstraZeneca have a separate agreement. The Government of India and Serum Institute have a separate agreement. Mm. If everyone has a separate agreement, we don't really know who's paying what prices. Mm. And we also need to understand that not only just India, but everybody else is also waiting in the queue. And this is where Anand Bhan's point is so valid that if we are going to uh, allow the sales of this vaccine in the private market, and i'm not saying that we don't need to hmm. the fact is that if we do that then we are going to take away the vaccine from people who are extremely vulnerable for hmm. example healthcare workers hmm. uh, elderly in other countries hmm. so global solidarity means hmm. that we actually look at the needs of the most vulnerable first hmm. before we you know push this vaccine into the private market we must supply public systems first and in that case if india wants to remain the pharmacy of the developing world hmm. it needs to put certain aspects into place hmm. which is actually help other governments understand what the pricing of these vaccines in terms of manufacturing costs goes into it and for that the government of india needs to do a process of discovery itself hmm. All right, uh, Professor Amatukar Pai, uh, they're shaking his head on that one as well. So the key issue here is of transparency. In a country like India, perhaps an RTI can be filed and we can get to know, or we don't know of late, frankly, if uh, what exactly has been the pricing and what has been the negotiation of late. Is that the way forward? That's something that needs to be implemented on a global platform? I think transparency is key, and I love the comments by uh, Lena Malini and Anand. Mm. They were all uh, right on point. Mm. Transparency is key in three things, in my opinion. One is the approval process for mm. vaccine. Lack of transparency there can really come back and haunt us later. Secondly, transparency in cost and pricing arrangements, which I think is really critical, where most countries are failing right now. Mm. And thirdly, transparency in the way the vaccine program is actually going to roll out mm. we cannot have the public wondering will mm. i get it here will i get it there will it be public will it be private do i have to pay for it do i don't have to pay for it none of that should be left to chance it should all be transparently thrown out there and only then i think we can retain the trust to the public i want to us to remember one very important thing that we have not discussed so far India is one country where we cannot afford vaccine hesitancy. Now, living mm. here in North America, I see vaccine hesitancy all around me. That's mm. because people here have forgotten what it means to have infectious diseases until COVID came along. Mm. There is no public memory of mm. outbreaks. Mm. So there's mm. no public memory of suffering. Mm. But India has a massive infectious diseases mm. burden, one of the highest in the world. And we cannot afford to have Indians refusing measles vaccine or mm. polio vaccines or DPT mm. or tetanus or hepatitis because India cannot go down that pathway of mm. vaccine hesitancy. So well, it hasn't happened uh, so far, data, but trust our politicians to we do can't afford it. Yes, a we spin cannot to afford it. it. Mm. We have to prevent it. Mm. We have to prevent vaccine hesitancy. Sure. And doing this COVID rollout correctly mm. is one way of preventing vaccine hesitancy on other vaccines that are even more important in my opinion. Right. Uh, Malini, come in on the fact that, you know, when somebody is watching out for an average viewer to understand how the entire vaccine economy works, uh, you know, the background here is a lot of pharma companies don't really like to invest in vaccination process. Tell us why does that happen and why there was so much interest in, say, preparing vaccines for COVID. Um, could you? Oh, okay. So in addition to what I think, uh, I'll just add to some of the potential solutions mm. uh, uh, based on, uh, you know, in addition to what Lena and uh, Madhukar said. Mm. Uh, so ideally, uh, the government should actually have the ability to enlist more manufacturers. So this actually, uh, this is also in response to the question that you asked, mm. to be able to make the vaccine, which would lead to uh, eventually decline in the price as more firms compete for the market. Mm. And the government should be in a position to, uh, to transfer the know-how and uh, facilitate know-how and technology transfer for this. 
US. Uh, we've seen this very successful in the case of medicines. So, you know, the more firms that, and very recently, even in the case of COVID-related uh, drugs, we've seen how the prices really reduced with more manufacturers coming on board. And this is also really a mechanism to reduce the government's own expenditure when it uh, thinks about uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think I'd like to talk about uh, government doing its part in providing public funding to enable development of vaccine candidates. Mm -hmm. In November, for example, an allocation of... Uh, 900 crore uh, was already done and the uh, and this uh, funding is going through DBT to support various candidates. At the moment, of course, there is uh, a lot of reason to be very optimistic because there is a very promising pipeline with more than a dozen companies involved in developing vaccine candidates to various collaborations. Mm. Um, and if all goes well, and some of these candidates do get approval in the next few months, we may expect to see a real crash in the prices of vaccines within even six months. Right. And lastly, I think I'll just uh, address the point about private sale. Hmm. So here, uh, what's worrying is a lack of commitment by the government. So yesterday, there was a clarification where the government is not really committing to provide free, free vaccination hmm. uh, beyond, uh, say, about three crore out of the first 30 crore hmm. people that they want to vaccinate. Well, they have clarified if that okay. umbrella will be expanded. So far, they're saying only three crore. Okay, okay. Yeah. So so that is worrying. And there are, of course, ethical issues in asking people to pay for vaccines which are not fully tested yeah. uh, and are getting uh, emergency approvals at the moment. Yeah. And uh, I think we should avert a situation where due to the pressure of vaccine companies, like, for example, Serum, yeah. along with many other voices in the private hospitals, pharma industry, yeah. uh, to open up the private market already. Sure. I think it's not an option at the moment. All right. Uh, sadly, that's all the time we have on the program today. But thank you all so much uh, for bringing in your thoughts on this very important issue. We really hope the government is listening and something is done more on the transparency of how exactly these prices, how exactly these vaccines are being procured and at what price. So that's it on Be The People. See you again next week. Bye-bye.